After finishing Deathloop for the second time recently, I was left feeling bewildered, baffled, and a little bit confused. I knew that I should really, really like the game. I mean, come on, it's an Arcane Studios developed 60s inspired first person shooter based around the concept of being stuck in a time loop. And yet, as exciting as I initially found that proposition to be during the early hours of my first playthrough, by the end of my second, I was left trying to figure out why Arcane had chosen to create a game which seemed to be at such odds with the concept at its core. Or to put it another way, I really don't think the way Deathloop is designed actually works all that well with the time loop idea the entire game is based around. Before we really get our teeth into that side of things, a quick word on Deathloop in terms of presentation. I am a huge fan. It's important I mention that up front, as whether I care to admit it or not, I think it does feed into why I found the game to ultimately be such a letdown. Deathloop has this wonderful retro-futuristic aesthetic, which to me is particularly reminiscent of the amazing British 60s TV show The Prisoner. Seriously, go watch it if you haven't already, it is fantastic. With a dash of 60s Bond here and a splash of no one lives forever there, also thrown in for good measure, along with many other references aside. Tom Salter's work on the soundtrack is also top tier, the voice acting and writing is generally solid and fits the overall tone of the game well, and execution aside, the core concept of being stuck in a 60s inspired time loop is one I've always found intriguing. On the surface at least, it's all rather fantastic. None of the parts of the game I've just mentioned may be particularly original, granted, but they combine to create an experience which I think is pretty unique. In terms of aesthetic, atmosphere, characterization and the like, the hats off to Arcane. However, as you might have guessed, there is a but coming, and it's a rather big but indeed. A whopper of a but, if I do say so myself. So here it is. Deathloop is a rather fantastic title at surface level, but in my view, the game you're left with once that initial sense of wonder begins to fade isn't really all that well made. And while there is certainly a myriad of reasons why that is the case, I want to focus on the time loop concept and the way the game is structured around it, as I think all the other issues are little more than side notes when you consider how flat this side of the game falls. For those of you not overly familiar with Deathloop and its time loop mechanic, here's a very basic outline. Colt Varn wakes up first in the morning on a beach, on the mysterious island of Blackreef, following a dream in which he's killed by an unknown assailant, soon revealed to be a woman named Juliana. Not long after, Colt realises that every time he dies or the day ends, he will loop back to the beach in the start of the day, although he does retain his memories from previous loops, leaving him a little better off each time he repeats the cycle. Eventually, Colt concludes that killing all eight of Blackreef's leaders, also known as visionaries, during a single day should be enough to break the loop for good, and so he rolls up his sleeves and begins trying to figure out how to do exactly that, while at the same time trying to avoid Juliana as she continues in her attempts to kill him. After an hour or two of what I'd call tutorial missions, levels during which you are gradually introduced to Deathloop's mechanics, the game really begins to open up. And while things may seem a tad complicated at first glance, the structure of the day you'll play through many, many times during the game isn't actually all that difficult to get to grips with. Essentially, each day, or loop, is split into four different segments, morning, noon, afternoon and evening, and during each loop you are given the opportunity to experience all four. You also don't have to play through every one of them in a single day either. You could, for example, start with the morning, skip noon and the afternoon, and then take on the evening. And as you might expect, you can only play through them in chronological order. Once you've chosen a time of day, you then need to select a location to visit, and there are four parts of Black Reef to choose from. Fristad Rock, an icy expanse home to a club and a compound. Carl's Bay, an industrial area by the sea. The Complex, a home to research stations old and new. And Updarm, the most happening town on all of Blackreef. Enemy placement, objectives, the environment itself and the like will change in each area depending on what time of day it is, and the different visionaries you're tasked with killing will only pop up in certain areas and at certain times, with your goal being to eventually figure out how to get them into positions where all eight can be killed during a single loop. Deathloop's gameplay therefore consists mostly of heading to different areas at different times to gather information, completing objectives designed to get you ever closer to completing the perfect loop, and scaling up your equipment, all of which is kept track on on these notice board screens which are both unique and somewhat unwieldy in equal measure. And it's at this point, as you learn the lay of the land and begin to really understand the game's structure, that you might also begin to realise how static and shallow everything really is. A day is a very specific measurement of time 
time, 24 hours in case you didn't know, but in Deathloop it doesn't ever feel like you've seen all of those 24 hours, or indeed many of them at all. Choosing to play Up Darm in the afternoon, for example, does not really mean you will play through the hours between, say, 12 and 6pm, as there is no passage of time once you have entered the area. Guards won't change their patrols or stop for a break depending on how many minutes have passed, nor will visionaries keep to any real kind of schedule, and the layout of an area is usually nigh on exactly the same when you enter it as it is when you leave, other than any changes which have occurred in response to your own actions during your visit. As such, the idea of time passing beyond levels magically changing from time of day to time of day is all but lost. There's no transitionary period, no opportunity to truly meddle with the established order of events. You can follow objective markers and complete quests, which may well change things in another area later in the day, but these are more like set changes in a play. If you've completed an objective in the morning, which means a visionary will now appear somewhere else in the evening, then all you need do is leave the area and head wherever it says they will be next. You're never privy to what happens in between when the lights go down. There is zero explanation of what occurred outside of the two moments you were a part of, but Arcane, the director of this carefully choreographed arrangement of smoke and mirrors, I think would prefer that you don't ask questions, that you simply enjoy the moments you are involved in. The problem is that this makes Deathloop's structure feel more like it was designed to squeeze as much content as possible out of the four levels included than it was to actually further the idea of being stuck in a day-long time loop. You have all the time in the world to figure out how to kill a visionary or complete an objective because there is no true passing of time, and because the path to the final loop is a much more linear one than you may at first realise, Deathloop pretty quickly begins to feel at odds with itself. The menus you trawl through prior to entering an area certainly make it seem like time is passing, and the characters talk about it a whole lot, which to be fair is expected given the nature of the plot. But once you're actually inside a level, they never really feel like real, lived-in places. If the transitions between times of day and the different areas feel like set changes in a play, then the sensation I get when I'm actually working my way through a level is that of existing within a photograph. You experience various different snapshots of various different levels, but they feel like part of a collage you never get to see the entirety of. That meant that by the midway point of both my playthroughs, I felt like I was doing little more than bouncing from objective to objective day after day, with the concept of the time loop playing very little of a role. The time of day I chose and the location I selected was dictated by the list of objectives I had remaining, rather than through any real intuition of my own, and beyond occasionally briefly considering which order to tackle those objectives in, I never really had to think about how being in a time loop affected my experience. It makes for an absolutely terrible feedback loop, as nothing about death loop feels immediately and truly reactive when you get past the menus and into the actual game. Arcane certainly wants you to think it is, but in the end, much of the game is really about hitting a series of triggers which are set in stone to cause something to change elsewhere, which at its core is no different from a million other video games. Watching events shift around you having completed an objective you think could be a fundamental part of the Deathloop experience, but 99% of the time, the next thing you do after completing said objective is simply backtrack to an area's exit. I suppose ultimately, my question is, why hinge everything around the time loop concept if you're not really going to do anything different beyond that? Like I said towards the start of this video, the game's more surface level attributes make the game seem like something new and exciting, but it's really not. In fact, I'd say the constant railroaded repetition and lifeless environments actually makes Deathloop a far less engaging experience than the Dishonored series or Prey ever was. There's no emergent gameplay, little feeling of true agency, and an overwhelming feeling that heavily segmenting something as fluid as a time loop really wasn't at all the correct direction to head in. And with the more superficial elements of the game being so outstanding and Arcane having such a stellar track record, I can't help but mourn the death loop which could have been. Thanks for watching the video, boys, girls and visionaries. Do consider liking and subscribing if you'd like to support the channel, and whether you enjoyed it or thought it was a bit rubbish, do also let me know your thoughts in the comments. And fingers crossed, I'll see you all again soon.